Gentleman from Utah, Mr. Bishop, is recognized for five minutes. Hey, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, you've seen a lot of uh, emails going around here from special interest groups. I want to be very positive, but a lot of the charges that are being made are um, stupid. So it's, it's almost as if they're saying, let's throw something on the wall and see what sticks. Uh, it's, it's gooey, but nothing is really sticking here. Should this be in the NDA? You're darn right it should be. The Army has said, will this have an in the listing of this bird, will it have an impact? Yeah, they said on Yakima, yes. On Hawthorne in Nevada, yes. On the Wyoming National Guards, probably. On Tooele, yes. On Dugway, probably. For the Navy, Fallon, yes. For the Air Force, on Mountain Home, yes. Nellis, yes. Uter, yes. For the Marines, uh, someplace in California, the Bridgeport Training Center, the answer once again is yes. I've heard this saying that this will transfer land over to state control. Oh, I wish it were so. And if there is some way, Mr. Chairman, you could write it to make that happen in a heartbeat, I would give it. I would, I would, uh, I would accept it. The fact of the matter is it doesn't change control. It doesn't, even deal, it doesn't even take protection away from the bird. What this says is every state that has a mitigation plan, that plan will be used and it will be used for 10 years so you can find out the impact of that plan. This is exactly what Secretary Salazar urged when we started down this process. But all of a sudden now we find Fish and Wildlife Service and the BLM with have blinders on them so they're not really seeing what it is and they're not communicating with other elements. It reminds me of several years ago when NASA decided to stop Constellation. It took us two years of probing before we found out what the result of taking that workforce, service, workforce down had on our missile defense system and it was to increase our costs. And if obviously interior and defense is not talking together, it's probably the result of Congress. We need to push them to make sure that, that does indeed take place. I think it is interesting to note that both defense and interior, which come from the same administration that like everything to be on the same page, the defense official position is they do not object to the amendment in the base bill. And the Army has said they do object to the Songus Amendment to remove it out of the mark and hopefully in the base bill. And it's not just listing of the birds. BLM is already starting a regional land management plan that would incorporate rules of land management into how it takes place. Now, I know there's some areas, like my friend from Massachusetts, doesn't have an inch of BLM property in her entire state. I, unfortunately, 44% of all public land is owned by the BLM, and it's all in the West. We recognize what would happen if, indeed, BLM were to go forward with this listing. It doesn't matter, or their rules. It wouldn't matter whether it's listed or not. It is the same concept and the same control. And you need a 10-year study to find out if it works. This is not a bird population that goes up and down. You saw some of the, the standards coming out from my home state's Natural Resource Department. Since 1968, the population of this bird is up 350 percent. From 2007 to 2013, there was a decline, and that's what many of these groups are looking at as the only data that they give you. But the year after that, it was a 39% increase and then a 20% increase, and that's why you want to use this plan for 10 years to see actually how it works, and you can go from then. It will not destroy the bird. It will not destroy habitat. But if we don't do it, it will have a negative impact on military readiness, even to the point of closing down some of our ranges and some of our gunnery aspects that are there. Like, this is one of the things where 75 sportsman groups have endorsed this. The state has endorsed it. You saw an editorial and roll call from three retired generals who endorsed this process. Another one in Stars and Stripes who endorsed this process. And it, and it brings to pack the idea of how difficult it is to deal with these situations. For example, the biggest threat to this bird is not human activity. It is wildfire on federal land. The second one is invasive species on federal land. And the third one is other species. So in my home county, the biggest predator that, that hurts the sage grouse population is another bird, which attacks its eggs and its young, and that bird is also on the endangered list. So you have an endangered bird eating an endangered bird, <laughs> and the way the interior wants to solve that, let's control more land. And now you wonder why I have premature gray hair sitting on the resource committee? The, the language should stay in the bill. This is a military issue. It is a readiness issue. And this is a logical approach that would have been, that was the goal of Secretary Salazar back then. It provides protection, but it does it in a rational way by allowing state plans to go into effect, state plans to go to work. And my state's already spent $60 million on sage grouse habitat rest restoration. States will do it, and they will do a good job. One of the reports, I got 12 seconds to say this, said you should not, you should not put this amendment in because 
only the federal government can do it, states can't. That's balderdash. The states know what they're doing. They are just as effective. Let them do their work. Save our, our readiness.